Hi. In this video, we will take you through how to systematically and thoroughly interpret a chest x-ray, building on the chest x-ray anatomy basics we covered in the previous video. Let's start with a simple demonstration on how to interpret and present a normal chest x-ray. We we'll assume we know the patient's hospital identity. This is an erect PA chest radiograph of Mr. John Smith, taken on the 1st of January 2018. The exposure is adequate, the patient is not rotated. The airway is central and appears patent. The left and right lung fields are clear throughout, with no obvious fractures, lesions or defects visible in the bones. The heart is not enlarged, with the heart borders and the outline of the major vessels clearly visible, with normal hilo shadowing. Both hemidiaphragms appear normal, with no blunting of the costophrenic or cardiophrenic angles. A gastric bubble is present under the left hemidiaphragm, and this is a normal sign. In summary, this is a normal PHS film. The first thing to check with any radiograph is the, obviously the patient details. The name, the date of birth, the hospital ID, the date the radiograph is taken in addition to the orientation of the film, whether it's a PA, AP or lateral. Now, this is a PA chest film. This is an AP chest film. And this is a lateral. More often than not, it's indicated on the radiograph itself what type of orientation the film is. When it's a lateral, it's pretty obvious to detect. However, there are some key differences to notice between a PA and an AP film. Let's take a look at the clavicles and scapular edges on this PA film and compare this to the AP. There are some key differences to note. In this AP film, the scapular borders are sharp and lie over the lung fields. The clavicles are obscured by the ribs and also the heart appears larger than normal. It is also important to note the patient position, whether they are erect or supine. Again, if this information is not presented, clues include the fluid levels in the stomach indicating an upright position. Next, we can use the mnemonic RIP to check and assess the technical quality of the film, that is, the rotation, the inspiration, and the penetration. Firstly, with the rotation, in a normal rotation, the spinous process should be at the medial ends of the clavicle, in other words, halfway between the clavicular heads. Inspiration. To check for adequate inspiration, you look at the midclavicular line and see which anterior rib intersects the diaphragm. It's usually one of the fifth, sixth or seventh anterior ribs. Finally, coming on to penetration, the degree to which the x-rays penetrate the body. At a very simplistic level, poor penetration leads to a very dark film and over penetration leads to a very white film. This is most easily assessed by seeing if the spine is visible behind the heart. Now, when you assess a patient, one of the first and most important steps is observing the patient at the end of the bed. This often gives you a crude idea of how well or unwell a patient is. This same principle can be applied to radiographs. Any obvious abnormality you can see is worth highlighting first such as in this case, there is a large patchy pacification in the right hemithorax, consistent with a pneumonia, an area of consolidation. In this radiograph, we can see there's a large bulky hyla mass, possibly suggestive of a lung cancer, causing right upper zone collapse. Ensure you sit, stick to a systematic approach afterwards to make sure nothing else is missed. Now we have found the simplest way to interpret chest x-rays is using the A, B, C, D, E approach. A, standing for the airways, lungs and pleura. First you begin with the trachea and you work down. The trachea contains air so it's darker than the surrounding structures. Check that the trachea is central or whether it's deviated to one side or the other. In pathological conditions, the trachea is often deviated. 
Now in this case, you can note there's a moderately sized pneumothorax on the left and there is slight mediastinal and tracheal deviation towards the right hand side. In this radiograph, the left lung is almost entirely collapsed and there is significant mediastinal and tracheal deviation towards the right hand side away from the side of the pneumothorax. Often the trachea is deviated towards the side of pathology, whether it's collapse or consolidation. In this case, there is significant upper zone collapse causing tracheal deviation towards the site of pathology. When you're describing a chest x-ray, the lung fields are divided into imaginary upper, middle and lower zones. However, this has no anatomical correlation to the lung lobes. Systematically look at each lung zone and compare both sides with symmetry. Look through the lung fields for any abnormal shadowing. As you can see here, there's some patchy opacification in the right apex, consistent with TB. Any opaque masses, there's a coin lesion here, suggestive of a lung cancer. Or any fluid levels. This is a nice demonstration of a right pleural effusion with a meniscus, which is often pathognomonic of a pleural effusion. Make sure you can see lung markings going to the edge of the chest wall. These faint fuzzy white streaks you can often see. However, if you can see the lung edge with the black area surrounding it, it is highly suspicious of a pneumothorax, as is the case here. Now, keeping with this same image, we can move on to B, the bones. It's important to look at the ribs, the clavicles, the proximal end of the humerus, and the thoracic spine. Key pathologies to be on the lookout for are fractures. Now, rib fractures usually go hand in hand with pneumothorax, but not always. Now, we said there was a pneumothorax on the right-hand side here, and if you look closely, you can see some rib fractures on the right. The outline of the bones should have a smooth contour. Any break in this contour could indicate a fracture. Other things to look out for would be metastatic deposits, areas of bones which are more or less dense than they should be. For example, these classic punched out lytic lesions in multiple myeloma. In addition, you can look out for signs of arthritis at the shoulder joint or dislocations. This is a chest x-ray of a patient who has undergone a road traffic accident. Now, it's quite easy to ignore the periphery of this chest radiograph, but if we look closely in the right shoulder region, you can see there's a clear dislocation here. When you're assessing the bones, it's also a good idea to look at the external soft tissues for any soft tissue damage. Again, this is another trauma radiograph. And as you can see here, there's bilateral rib fractures. And of note, in the right subcutaneous space, there's some significant subcutaneous emphysema. Now we'll move on to C, circulation. We'll be focusing mainly on the heart and the mediastinum. When you're going through C, you need to assess the size, the shape and border of the heart and mediastinum. The heart size can be assessed using the cardiothoracic ratio. In a PA film, as is the case in this radiograph, the heart occupies less than 50% of the width of the thorax. If this width is greater than 50% in a PA film, this implies cardiomegaly, as is the case here. Other causes of an enlarged cardiothoracic ratio include pericardial effusion. The borders of the heart should be well defined. An obscured edge could indicate consolidation or collapse in this blurred area. As is the case here, there is some opacification in the right hemithorax. It is also worth looking in the hyla region and the associated pulmonary vasculature at this point. Any visible lymph nodes would be an abnormal finding. Look around this area for any masses or any calcified areas. In this particular case, 
we can see a well-defined hyaluronic pacification is consistent with hyaluronic lymphadenopathy in a TB patient. D is for the diaphragm. Each side of the diaphragm should appear as a dome with sharp white costophrenic and cardiophrenic edges. Remember the right hemidiaphragm sits slightly higher than the left due to the liver underneath. On the left here, under the left hemidiaphragm, you can see a gastric bubble, which is a normal finding. Poorly defined hemidiaphragm could be suggestive of a lower lobe lesion, and a blunted costophrenic angle could be due to a pleural effusion. It is often not a usual finding to see air under the right hemidiaphragm. When a picture like this is seen, this could be an indication of a serious and emergent intra-abdominal pathology, such as a perforated viscous. In this case, although we can see a gastric bubble on the left, we can also see some extensive air, what seems to be in the splenic flexure. In this case, this patient had a perforated sigmoid colon with extensive intra-abdominal peritonism. E is for everything else. We're looking for signs of medical intervention, such as invasive lines and tubes, pacemakers, various things. In addition, it's useful to check their position. Junior doctors are asked to commonly look for the position of an NG tube on a chest x-ray before feeding. In this case, we can look at the NG tube and it's correctly sighted in its subdiaphragmatic position. Now, in this case, in contrast, the NG tube, the tip of it, lies in the left main bronchus. And in this case, feeding would be contraindicated. In this x-ray, we can see a pacemaker in situ on the right hemithorax. So using the approach outlined in this video, you can test yourself on a few of the chest x-rays in the next video. Pause your video at each image, take a minute to review the chest x-ray, and note down your findings. Unpause the video, then listen to the answer. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please keep watching for more web lectures.